Hi, welcome back to um, our continuing class on uh, structural mechanics. Today we are going to look at uh, how to. Um, today we are going to look at uh, how to do a complete structural analysis of axially loaded bars. This is by far the most important class in 305 because it involves everything, and we are going to do the same procedure every time. Okay, so this is really important. So if you get this idea and if you get this sequence, <coughs> you can actually solve any structural mechanics problem, not just the ones that we are talking about in the book, uh, in in anything. The, you know, how difficult it is to solve and so on change with problems, but the idea is the same. So let me, uh, let us kind of uh, get started. Okay, so our basic idea is procedure. is the same for all problems. So I wanted to remember that thing. <coughs> so well what is this magic procedure? Well first let us look at an example problem. Okay, so what I have is a big object, big heavy object which is hinged at one side and I have two cables from which it is hanging. Looks like that and the weight is here and that is 3 kilo newtons and this distance is um, let us see, let us, 2 units, 2 meters, 2 meters, 2 meters, uh, this height is 3 meters and the diameter of this thing is 4 mm. Right? So, I am not saying that this is a particularly realistic problem, this is a mental exercise to get you all the features that are there in any real problem. Okay? Later we will see some examples where these kinds of problems show up on a regular basis, but right now we are just thinking of it, do not take it too seriously in terms of the, in terms of the meaning of the problem, but it is a good problem to try out. Okay? So I got this set up <coughs> and uh, we want to find out, so it is made of steel and we want to find out two things, one is it safe the second thing we want to find out is uh, how much will it deflect you remember the three S's that we talked about strength stiffness, stability. We are going to look at two of these things today, strength and stiffness. Okay? So let us get started. So the idea, so we got the idea of this problem, right? So our first step, let us look at, this is called external load. Uh, it might seem like a trivial thing, you are thinking what the heck is this external load identification, well, I mean if you look at the problem it is already given as 3 kilo newtons. Well, in this particular case, yes it is, but in reality we may not actually know the load, we have to, we may have to guess it and this is a long process and I told you about this. In this particular case, we have 3 kilo newtons at location A, so we know where the load acts, we know how much it is and we know what kind it is, it is a dead load. 
So when I hear the word dead load, I'm thinking, okay, it's a static load. We know it's not going to vary very much. So I can do a static analysis and things will work out reasonably well. So that's what I mean by dead load. Okay. Then <clears throat> step two is what do we know? What do we need? What are we looking for? We want to see, will it break? And uh, how much will it deflect? Okay. So when I say, will it break? I have to figure out where. So, as I said before in the earlier classes, we are going to decide, we are going to pick some points where it's going to break and see if it's going to break there. You know, as you get more experience, you can pick points that make more sense. At this stage, we are just going to pick some points and see whether it's going to break there. As we get more experience, we will pick good points to figure out. Right now, we are going to pick, let us say we think it's going to cut like that. And so we are going to pick section AA. Is it going to break here? Is it going to be fine? And the other question is, how much will it deflect? By how much will it deflect? I want to see how much will the will the bar uh, will the bar BAC? How much will it sag? You know, because this whole thing will deflect and so on. So we'll see how that goes. Okay. So now we have. What do we need to know? This is A B. What information do we need? This case geometry. We have quite a bit listed here. See it's listed here. Material is known as steel. In a design problem, you have to pick these. In many cases, we will not know exactly which ones to pick. So as we go along, you have to remember, you have to pick two things when you are designing something. You have to pick the geometry. The shape is already known, what is called the configuration. We know how things are attached. You have to pick the geometry and you have to pick the material. And what will happen is this is an iterative process. So remember, I am going to write this out because this is such an important idea. So, in a real design, at this stage, we already know shape and configuration. That is, we know how things are attached. We want, we will have to pick geometry, dimensions, and material. And I want you to remember this. We have to pick this and this. We already know shape and configuration. Configuration means how things are attached. So, at this case, at this point, we already know a lot of these things. So, we can proceed a little bit more with the design. Okay, we know what we are looking for, uh, we know 